Uh, State Senator Alan Cropsey uh, goes on with his day. He's the Republican from DeWitt. He will be our Northwood University Leader of the Day. Northwood University is celebrating 50 years of producing leaders. Today it's uh, Senator Alan Cropsey. And there's uh, still talk. You know, uh, we have radio stations in Traverse City and Petoskey right. and Grand Rapids all across the state, Muskegon, Ludington, you name it. And we talk about a new ambassador bridge in Detroit, right. a new bridge, they, right. uh, a second span for the private bridge linking uh, Detroit right. to Canada and potentially a public bridge south of that right. that would link. Basically, I think it's built for truck traffic, isn't it? From, no, it's, uh, uh, it's built for everything. The second span, the, uh, the Drick Bridge is what they call it. So. But they're, they're, they're depending on truck traffic in order to oh, yeah. pay for it, oh, right? Oh, yeah. The, the truck traffic is the crucial traffic. The commercial traffic mm -hmm. is uh, absolutely vital for, the, uh, for, for, for any bridge that goes across there. So right now the, there are people in uh, Grand Rapids and, and Traverse City and Petoskey who are saying, well, why should the state fund another bridge uh, linking Detroit to Windsor? We've been doing fine with the one we have all these years. Well, there, um, the Ambassador Bridge, the private bridge there, uh, we have just spent 230 to $240 million on the Gateway Project to make that a more viable bridge. And the understanding was that the people who own the Ambassador Bridge were looking to do a second span to twin it right mm -hmm. next to it. Um, and they have bought almost all the property that's needed. They've spent about half a billion dollars purchasing property and they plan on spending another half a billion dollars actually putting up the span. And so uh, that's going ahead. The question becomes, if that goes ahead, which it looks like it will, then why is Canada and the Michigan Department of Transportation trying to put another bridge up in competition with it just a mile or two miles south of there? And that's a very good question that I think everybody ought to be asking, the people of Canada and the people of Michigan. Some people say that it's a security matter, that we shouldn't have a border crossing in the hands of a private industry. Well, that's, uh, I think that's a bogus argument because uh, the customs people are there at the Ambassador Bridge. They have a very large presence there. They have to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ambassador Bridge, uh, after 9-11, being privately owned, they were the people that responded uh, the fastest to the changes that had to be made. Now, were there backups right after 9-11? Yes, there were. There were backups, I think, at every international crossing. Uh, but this one responded faster than anyone else did. And I think you'll find uh, that the awards and that sort of thing would say that this is the most efficient crossing in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that being true, and we've just upgraded it, then why are we looking at doing another bridge, especially when traffic has been down about 50 percent over the last uh, decade? Is this a matter that will be resolved uh, anytime soon? Well, the Department of, Michigan Department of Transportation was supposed to give us an investment-grade traffic study on the rationale for a brand new one two miles south. Uh, they agreed to that last year. fact is they wanted to uh, have an up or down vote, but then they never gave us the investment-grade traffic study. Uh, they were supposed to do that by May 1st, and we were supposed to vote on it by June 1st. But we've never received a study. So anything the legislature does as far as uh, promoting a brand-new bridge two miles south is just a shot in the dark. I mean, this would be the largest building project in Michigan history, and we don't even have the uh, investment-grade traffic study that it seems like we ought to have. So, you know, I can't see the legislature moving on this until we get more information. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Great being here with you. And you too. And you've got a great guy coming on in just a few minutes talking about some fascinating automobiles. Ah, and one of them is right out in front of our Gillespie Group storefront studio. Uh, what is that fine vehicle, sir, that you've driven in here today? That's a 1964 98 Oldsmobile convertible. Uh, Senator Cropsey was saying, I think the first vehicle you ever bought was an Oldsmobile? It was a 1978 uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass. Cutlass. Oh, I love that car. Yeah, where is it today, I wonder? Wouldn't it be uh, nice to have that one? rusting in some junkyard <laughs> somewhere. Be nice to have some of those cars back, but you're, you're lucky you've got one right here that you tool around with in, uh, with the top down, and you've uh, brought another sort of, it's like an auto show out here on Michigan Avenue in front of our studio for Steve Zabin. He's the spokesman for the National Antique Oldsmobile Show, and you've got another car show and swap meet uh, coming up the 7th through the 10th? Yeah, it star actually starts today. Does it? This, this, this is a national event. It's a, it's a four-day event. Mm -hmm. Where and when and why and how and all that stuff, please, well, if you would, sir. Well, it takes place at the Lansing Lexington. Now, that's formerly the Sheridan Hotel. That's on the corner of uh, 496 and Kreitz Road. Right, so people coming from Grand Rapids or other parts of the state just zip on over on 96, connect to 496, and there you are. Oh, yeah, really, really easy to get to. They have a great facility. 
And uh, there'll be people coming from about 24 states, Canada. How many vehicles will you have? Uh, 150 cars. Now, this is a very exclusive car show because these, these cars start from 1897 to 1966 only. So wow. these are the real, real classics, the uh, concourse of the Oldsmobile, you might say. How much does it cost? <laughs> Concord Oldsmobile. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> We've got one of those in Rochester, Michigan, and then, of course, the Pebble Beach one is the, is the really big, fancy one, and uh, that's uh, Concord Elegance. Well, that's why I, I brought that up. This old sitting out here might be in Rochester in a few weeks. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, it's a white convertible. Uh, looks like uh, it's a two-door, isn't it there? Yeah, yeah. Convertibles have to be two doors. Very square car. Um, speaking of convertibles, do you know what I learned last week? Uh, my wife's birthday is this week, and she's going to play in the Michigan Women's Open Pro-Am with some lady friends. And I thought, what do you get her for her birthday? What do you get her? She's got everything. I thought, you know what? I'm going to rent her a convertible so she can drive to Crystal Mountain with the ladies in this convertible because the weather's really nice. You can't rent a convertible in the state of Michigan. Wow. Try. It's unusual. I <laughs> thought that, you know, be simple. Push a button, go on the Internet, pick one out. But we just don't have them. And wow. when it's listed on all the car companies, I, I looked at every airport, Detroit, Grand Rapids, you name it. And it says, not available, not available. So I guess it's because of the short season that they don't bother to keep convertibles at our rental car companies here? Well, that's, that's a tough one to answer. But I remember going to Florida. You can find all the convertibles sure, you want. Sure, in the Sunshine State. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I guess it would be kind of dumb. Who would rent a convertible in Michigan uh, in November to, let's say, oh, I don't know, July? <laughs> I, I, have, I have an answer for you, though. Yeah, you, you would. have plenty of car friends. Just call them. <laughs> call them. They'll, they'll provide you one. Well, this is terrific. So how much does it cost to get in? Okay, well, now it's free to the public. Great. The, the cars are going to be on display for four days. Okay. Saturday is the big day mm -hmm. where they're going to be displaying them. But uh, if you want to show your car, you have to register it when you when you arrive, and it's not too inexpensive. It's thirty dollars for the four day event. But one of the uniquest things you'll see at this show is for the and and you'll probably never see it again in history. There'll be 10, 1910 to 1912 Oldsmobile Limiteds, and if anybody wow. does not know what a limited is, these are vehicles that are worth two to three million dollars each. Wow. Sitting right there. You're sitting there, so you'll see 10 of them. It's a Lexing Hotel, uh, Lexington Hotel, Kreitz Road there on 496, uh, celebrating uh, the Oldsmobile, Concord the Oldsmobile. We're calling it for fun. What's the, it, the real name of the show? Is Just the, It's the National Antique Oldsmobile Car Show and Swap Meet. So yeah. Oldsmobile is obviously important to Michigan's history, but people will be coming from all over the country. All over the country for four days. All right. And what are the hours of operation? Uh, starting, I think it's at 9 in the morning till 5 every day. Okay. There, and is, is there a web address or anything like that? Uh, uh, yes, it is. It's www.antiqueolds.org. Antiqueolds.org. Thank you very much for bringing that fine vehicle well, you're with welcome. the top down. It's probably very nice to drive over here in the morning in that. The last few days have been... Plenty hot. <laughs> Do you get a lot of looks on the highway or oh, the drove oh yeah. roads? Oh, yeah. You get the thumbs up all the time.